giants of industry on water. Almost 50,000 ships like this pass through the Turkish Straits every year. This key supply network has helped fuel Turkey's economic growth for centuries. And this year, Turkey saw a 4% growth in its GDP in the first quarter. And for sustained long-term growth, the government is looking at five key goals. We will attract both investments into our country and make investments abroad. We will manufacture more and export more. We have five principles in this regard, investment, employment, production, exports, and a current account surplus. Will our country achieve this? We will. The vision is to make Turkey an export-focused economy. Already a competitive currency and low labor costs add to increased demand by other nations to invest and buy from Turkey. But strategic investment in key sectors puts the country on the path to achieve this goal. The defense industry is the country's latest upstart, winning clients from Ethiopia to Ukraine. A recent report shows defense exports increased by more than two-thirds from 2018 to 2022. Turkey hit a record $4.4 billion in military shipments last year alone, a figure larger than some European countries' annual defense budgets. Manufacturing is vital for Turkey's vision to become a value-added export economy, utilizing raw materials and exporting finished products. Some major manufacturing exports include textiles, machinery and equipment, as well as chemicals and pharmaceuticals. Turkey aims to improve productivity by investing almost $1.5 billion to integrate Industry 4.0 solutions, a process of digital transformation across manufacturing industries. This is expected to save $10 billion in manufacturing costs. Moving towards more domestic sources of energy will also help cut costs for exports. The discovery of natural gas in the Black Sea and oil in the Gabar Mountains in the southeast of the country will complement Turkey's export economy goals. Analysis have also said that Turkey's workforce is still in the early stages of its potential growth. Turkey is becoming a, a middle-aged uh, country. Uh, our average rate uh, has reached to uh, 32 years of old. This means that now we have an ample population uh, who is uh, far uh, uh, ahead of their education and training years, who have had a relative uh, considerable experience uh, in business and uh, who have uh, mastered uh, a certain level of uh, expertmanship in uh, putting out uh, really growth uh, and value, added value. So therefore, in the coming five to ten years, uh, Turkey will uh, reach uh, her prime uh, uh, regarding uh, the abilities of growth and productivity. The future looks young and bright for a country setting its vision sky high. Emre Boz, TRT World. Let's get more on this now with TRT World's defence analyst Ube Shabanda, who joins me here in the studio. Good to have you back with us, Ube. Let's focus on the defence sector uh, for now, because over the last 20 years, we've really seen uh, Turkey uh, develop its own capacity to build various uh, defence material products. Explain to us uh, that evolution. How has it progressed over the last two decades? Well, Turkey may be the new kid on the block when it comes to defense exports to a global market, but it is causing waves um, and really disrupting sort of the traditional exporters like the U.S., Russia, and China with its localized defense innovations and products like the TB2 Bayraktar, like the Kizil Elma, uh, like the Anadolu drone ship, uh, and many other products. So just to give you an example of just how far Turkey has come in the past 20 years. In the early 2000s, Turkey's defense exports were around $100 million. Year to date, they're at a little over $4 billion. And the chief of Turkey's defense industry's presidency estimates that will go up to $6 billion by next year in terms of defense products um, exported around the world. And the customer base is diverse from European countries like Poland, the Baltic states that want the TB2 Bayraktar, 
unmanned combat aerial vehicle to Azerbaijan, to Libya, and other countries throughout Africa and Asia. And so it's really that what the customers here around the world are looking at battle proven capability. And that's what Turkey is so unique amongst many of the emerging markets that can provide these capabilities because uh, products like the TB2 Bayraktar have been battle proven in combat in places like Azerbaijan during the Karabakh War, uh, the 44 Kar day Karabakh War in 2020, um, in Syria, in Iraq, and in, of course, North Africa, and in Ukraine. Uh, Europe's largest war in modern memory, the Bayraktar TB2, according to Ukrainian defense officials, has really proven uh, really capable and helped Ukraine churn the tide in the initial days of the war. So that is why uh, the leadership of Turkey's defense industries are really uh, optimistic in terms of what the future holds, and they are really focused on localization so that Turkey is not dependent on foreign supply chain. On a recent visit to Finland, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, pointed out uh, the effects of the Russia invasion uh, on Ukraine, on the Russian economy itself, but specifically on Russia's defence exports. Explain to us how uh, Russia's defence sector has been affected by this, uh, and will it recover? And also, can a country like Turkey step in to fill that void? I think that is a very interesting and fascinating dynamic. We heard from the U.S. Secretary of State, uh, Tony Blinken, that um, the, the war in Ukraine is not going the way that Russia envisioned it and that the military setbacks that the Russian military is facing in Ukraine will reportedly set back the Russian military for years to come. And I think that is a fairly accurate assessment given the heavy casualties that Russia is facing in Ukraine and the, uh, the difficulty that the Russian defense industry is facing given the isolation, the economic global isolation that Russia is facing uh, to provide spare parts and replacements of so much of the damaged uh, military goods that the, Ru the Russians still need now that the war is going to its second year. So what that means is that uh, customers of, the Rus of Russia's defense exports around the world are looking at what could be a failed military and the Russian defense industry cannot meet those export orders because they need as all as much as you know the tanks, ammunition, shells uh, that they could possibly need because this war is uh, is going on to the second year. The Russians are essentially bogged down in a quagmire. So what does that mean? That leaves a potential opening for Turkey's defense exports to these customers that are looking at Russia that are now rethinking, hey, do we need the Russian military exports or do can we look to other alternatives? And that's where uh, Turkey can provide that alternative. Uh, it's economic. It's uh, They can produce these military goods at a high rate and they have battle proven capability and that could potentially put Turkey at a very competitive base compared to uh, other countries like Russia, for example, that had previously dominated this market.